When you think about football boots, what do you think about? Do you think nostalgia? Do you think technology? Do you think the weight of the boot, the fit of the boot, the feel of the boot? When I think about putting on a pair of football boots, I feel that I put on a pair of tools that I am using. Not only are they tools, but they're also a way to express myself. Oftentimes in football, when we dress up in uniform and we're walking out onto the pitch, the only things that differentiate ourselves are tattoos, hairstyle, and our boots. And so boots for me have always been something that have been very special. And if you haven't seen the video that I posted several months ago about my top five favorite boots, you will absolutely need to go watch that before watching this video. So pause this one, go watch it, and then come back to this one because I have one of my favorite boots of all time here ready for you guys. Let's hop into the video. As you guys can probably see from the thumbnail and the title, they are the Nike Magista Obra Ones in the wolf gray with the black and blue accents. It happens to be a blue color that is very, very close to the brand coloring that I have for my logos, and it is near and dear to my heart. I absolutely love that colorway, so I am so stoked to get my hands on a pair. Huge shout out to Proper Retro Boots for supplying these boots for me. I went on the page and contacted Marcus Wheeler, who's the owner and boot supplier, so to speak, on the Instagram page. I will throw his Instagram up on the screen in just a little bit. I actually got a chance to reach out and have a chat with him about proper retro boots, why they're important, and what the vibe of retro boots is, and especially given that they supplied me with the most beautiful pair of Magistas, I'm super thankful for them. And let's check out the interview that I had with Marcus before we hop into the review. All right, guys. Uh, thanks so much for joining again. I've got Marcus Wheeler with me here, who is the owner of Retro Boots. Um, it's at proper underscore retro underscore boots on Instagram. Um, I think it's just Marcus Wheeler on YouTube right now. That's it, yeah. Um, it was Marcus Wheeler, PRB. There it is. Awesome. So that's on YouTube. Um, he's got some really great content for sort of the behind the scenes of what it means to run a like a page on Instagram uh, where he's selling retro boots. Uh, I actually just bought a pair of Magistas, which you'll see later in this video, which I'm very excited for. And uh, yeah, so welcome on Marcus. Thanks so much for joining. Thank you, thank you so much for having me. Thank you for buying the boots as well. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Oh, nice. um, so give us uh, kind of an idea of how things are run. What what made you get into proper retro boots? Like what? And you're in a really weird, interesting market space where you're providing not only the top tier stuff, but you're providing some of the mid level tier stuff, which I know a lot of the other retro uh, boot pages often stay away from. Yeah, so it uh, all started for me about uh, maybe about 16 months ago now, uh, mm -hmm. kind of just before the first coronavirus lockdown here in the UK. Uh, I was playing tons of football, just like five aside, six aside. Uh, I'd taken a few years off, really, like while I was at uni, stuff like that. I'd not played so much. Uh, I didn't really have a good pair of boots to play in. I'd borrowed some from a friend, and then I was looking at buying a new pair, and I just didn't like anything, and I thought, I want to get a pair for myself to play in. And I want mm. the boots that I used to play in. So like anything, I was looking at anything kind of like pre-2013-ish. And then I was just doing the usual, kind of looking on eBay, stuff like that, trying to find a pair for myself. And I kept looking and I just couldn't find anything, but I kept finding stuff in other sizes or things that I didn't personally want, but I thought someone else would. So I, I was putting the idea off for a little while. I kept seeing stuff and thinking, oh, like I can't spend my money on some boots I'm not even going to wear. And then one day I just took the plunge from my lunch break at my, at my old job. I sat down, I bought four pairs on eBay that purposefully wouldn't fit me so I couldn't wear them. And I was like, right, I'm just going to start an Instagram page. I'm going to try and sell these. If I sell these, I'll buy some more. I'll try and sell those, try and get myself some pairs along the way. And then mm -hmm. yeah, about, about 16 months later, here I am. I've just quit my job, started doing this full time. So it's pretty cool. Yeah, congratulations. That's a huge step. Thanks, man. Yeah, it's a, it's a big risk, definitely. But uh, yeah. it, it is at the, the kind of tipping point where I, I, I either needed to slow it down and keep it manageable, which I didn't want to do, or I had to find a way to put even more time into it. And the only way to get more time was to start relying on it as my kind of sole income. So, yeah, to, uh, taking the risk. Uh, lucky I've got, you know, good people around me supporting me and stuff. My, my girlfriend actually convinced me to quit my job to do it full time which I think I'm probably the only person in the world 
Who, who oh. that so you gotta you gotta put a ring on that one. <laughs> oh yeah, well that's why I'm trying to sell so many boots. They're pretty expensive. So. Yeah, there, there you go. That's fantastic. And what sort of things do you notice in the market of retro football boots that sort of help you along the way? Like, do you do a lot of research, or is it just kind of you you buy and then resell what you can get, or how does that work? Like, how do you how do you manage your stock? Yeah, it, it started off more with kind of sticking to what I know. So I would purposefully kind of look for any pairs that I personally thought were interesting or had kind of nostalgia attached to them. So it started mm -hmm. off mainly Adidas Predators, uh, like Nike Total 90s. But like you touched on earlier, not just the elite level top model pairs. I would go for some mid-tier stuff. Because like growing up, I couldn't afford to buy the top tier boots. So I always played in like the cheap ones or like the middle ones if I was lucky, if I had a bit more money to get some. Mm -hmm. So like I, I'd always grown up playing with them and I still had the same nostalgic memories of those that other people would have. So I thought, you know, surely I can't be the only one that wants these. So I was just, yeah, just mopping up as many pairs as I could afford. Like, like I said, I bought four, sold those. I think I bought six, sold those. And I think I bought 10 and it's kind of just spiraled from there. In terms of like research uh, along the way, anecdotally, I've learned a lot kind of just dealing with stuff or you learn to look for little things to distinguish uh, what year is this boot or is this top yeah. level, is this not? Lots of like little things that you pick up on. But um, no, I, I think I already had quite a passion. I was pretty nerdy about football always growing up in terms of boots, players, shirts, everything. So I think that naturally just mixed with the kind of obsession with the business side as the ball got rolling. And that's culminated into at first buying like anything and everything and just seeing what sold. And then over time, kind of, because there's so many pages, kind of finding my niche within the market, building like a, a voice and an audience and a style and a, kind of bringing all of that together to try and create a real brand behind everything rather than just buying a pair and trying to sell a pair. I want to sell people nostalgia. I want to sell them an experience. I want to make people happy because if you feel good in the boots you're wearing, you think you look good, you're probably going to play better. So all these little kind of percentages all add up and all come together to make what I think proper retro boots, hopefully what people pick up on as the kind of the ethos behind the brand. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, I mean, clearly in your energy, you can feel that. I mean, you're, you're clearly very passionate about it and that's, that's super oh, yeah. cool from somebody who's like buying a pair of boots from you is like, that's, that's awesome to hear that that's where it's coming from. So I really appreciate that. Yeah. Do you, as you're going on in this process, do you have, I, I think I sort of know the answer to this question, but for those who haven't seen you on Instagram or on YouTube, uh, do you have, are you keeping some pairs of boots? Oh yeah. I've got, um, okay. I, can, I kind of split them into two different categories. I have uh, every Tuesday night. So tonight actually here, uh, I play at the moment, I just play six aside with my friends and every Tuesday I try and test out a different pair of boots and I'm mm -hmm. trying to go for models that I have that, I have in or have sold a lot of so I can test stuff and get a feel for it. So like over the last kind of four or five weeks, as I've been back playing after the lockdowns come up here, I've mm. tried to wear pairs that I would never usually have bought for myself. So usually whether it's from other sellers or eBay or something, I'll try and pick up a cheap used pair. I've got maybe like 15 different pairs at the moment that I, I've been testing out or pairs that I've been playing in for a little while just so I can compare and contrast. And then I mm. can really give people information if they ask me questions about stuff because I, I want to know personally firsthand what a pair feels like if I'm going to tell someone if they're deciding between two. And then I've got maybe like six or seven pairs that are sat next to me right now that are pairs that are either too special or pairs that I've spent way too much money on that I'm not going to wear that I just kind of sat here more. It, I'd say it's less of a kind of investment thing and it's more for me it's like I have a very niche collection of things that I'm after so just little bits that really stand out to me along the way so either uh, predator power swerves like the rarer more specific models so that's my, like my favorite boot of all time looks wise and then I also collect a few kind of match worn player pairs for Chelsea players or England players because I'm a, I'm a Chelsea fan so mm -hmm. anything weird or interesting I'll keep to one side and then yeah try and get in some cheap pairs that I can test out so I can kind of tell people what it is that makes each boot different. Absolutely. And what are your, I'm sure people want to know, what are your, what are your top three boots of all time? If you could have just three pairs of boots, what would you wear? 
Uh, in terms of wearing, I would go for, um, ooh, I think I'd go for the CTR Maestri 3. Uh, the, definitely the most comfortable boot that I've ever worn. I've got quite wide feet, so it does limit what I can play in a little bit. I tend to mm -hmm. play more in Nikes and collect Adidas pairs. I think the old Predators look better, but for me, just the shape of my foot, uh, Nikes usually fit better, so I'd go... Mastery 3, I'd go for the Nike Total 90 Laser 2. That was my, my favourite boot growing up, one of the best boots I've ever played in. And then I would probably, in terms of actually playing in them, it's a toss-up between the Nike Hyper Venom 3 or the Nike Phantom Venom. Either mm -hmm. one of those two. As a, as a person with wide foot, they both fit really nicely. Uh, I think the Phantom Venom I was massively surprised by. I got a pair in the sale from the Nike website maybe like a year ago now. I played in them a bunch of times. They're, they were amazing. They were great. And then uh, I do, I play in all the different models of Hyper Venoms, and I think the three is probably the perfect blend. So if I had to narrow it down to three, I'd say the CTR, the Total 90 Laser 2, and I'll go with the, the Hyper Venom 1. No, sorry, Hyper Venom 3. Yeah. Hyper Venom 3 was my favorite of all time. Yeah. Yeah. I, it's, it's so hard to find a pair of those anywhere. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. I got really lucky. Again, I bought a pair from another boot seller that I'm friends with, a guy called Boot Nerd on Instagram, who's based uh -huh. in Germany. Uh, I picked a pair up off of him, super cheap, because they had some damage. And he was like, look, I've glued them up. Do you want to get them cheap? And you can test them out and tell me if it works. So I said, yes, I've played them a few times. So if you want some Hyper Venoms, Boot Nerd, he's always got stuff in. He's a good guy. Yeah, fantastic. That's awesome. Um, and so I guess sort of to give an idea of what, PRB what so you as an entrepreneur what does your page do like what could you do for any sort of client like what's your specialty uh, I'd say my specialty is I, I try and use the the slogan putting the fun back into football I mm -hmm. try and uh, bring something to people that isn't just like really great boots with super high price tags because they're really hard to find because other people do that way better than I could ever do that so I try to bring like the broadest spectrum of sizes and prices and styles to suit everyone so that everyone has an opportunity to get something that makes them feel better when they play football. Really, mm -hmm. I'm all about inclusivity and uh, equal opportunities for people, whether that is someone who wants to feel like nostalgic when they're playing, but they only have, say, like 50, 60 pounds to spend on a pair or someone who is like a, a serious player who loves like a say yeah pair of magistas from 2015 and they're willing to spend some more money then i want to provide options for everyone and just bring something to everyone that they can feel a part of rather than just uh, like a kind of select service for people who can afford it absolutely and uh where can people find you um so instagram at proper underscore retro underscore boots it's not the catchiest with all the underscores uh, YouTube is Marcus Wheeler PRB and that's all like you said vlogs kind of behind the scenes stuff there is mm -hmm. now that I've got more time to make videos there are going to be some kind of more boot reviews uh, stuff like that some more content to go with the kind of ethos of the brand that I'm trying to push and then uh, properretroboots.com is where you can find stuff we ship worldwide as you know so yeah absolutely no it's it's amazing so yeah guys if you uh, if you definitely want to get some some proper retro boots definitely check out marcus um the page is fantastic and uh website's really easy to get onto and and get your boots and uh obviously a very nice guy so um marcus thanks again for being on no worries thank you very much man i appreciate it absolutely all right, so that gives you a great idea of what a boot supplier does. So somebody like Marcus is going to take boots and get them from wherever he sources them from and of course distribute them to people like me who want a feeling, who really wanna feel something when they put their boots on. And that is exactly what happens when I throw these on my feet. I am so excited. They are of an age now. They're about six years old, seven years old. They're brand new, but they're about seven. The silo came out in 2014. This colorway I think came out in 2015, I believe, and obviously didn't come with a box or anything. So I won't do an unboxing, but I do have a string bag for you guys. It is uh, in that wolf gray color, as you can see with the accents in blue, which are really nice Nike football 
on the back, which is awesome. Nike swoosh on the front. So we are gonna open them up on camera right now. And I am so, so, so stoked for these. Here we go, guys. Holy moly. Uh, I have obviously seen these before because I took them out of the box as soon as I got them. Uh, these, per my list, were my second favorite pair of boots that I ever wore. And to have a brand new pair in my hands is just absolutely stunning. So here are the boots. Check these out. They are absolutely beautiful in really good condition. There you go, that Magista on the back and everything so soft. All right, so the Magista Obra for a little bit of history for you guys. So the Magista came out for the World Cup in that yellow and red and orange colorway. It was a very bright colorway. It came out for the 2014 World Cup. Now. This was a boot that turned a lot of heads, but it was pretty controversial right at the beginning. A lot of people said, what the heck? What is this collar situation going on? What's that about? Is it gonna inhibit us from moving our ankle? Is it for support? Is it for lockdown? What's the deal here? Flyknit, this first generation of Flyknit, had never been used before in a boot. And obviously Flyknit had been a part of some of their shoes before, but they started incorporating it into the boots with this and then the Superfly 3 or 4, I believe, that came out with it for the World Cup. It was a red colorway with a yellow swoosh. I'll put a picture up on screen right now. And they were the most beautiful shoes. And that one had the carbon fiber sole plate as well, I believe. But the Magista turned a lot of heads. And I, when I first saw them, I thought, that is the stupidest idea I've ever seen. This collar thing, what the heck? And one of my friends, shout out Eric Ersted, uh, bought a pair of them and said, hey, these are some of the most comfortable shoes I've ever had on my feet. You have to try them on. And so I bought a pair of Magistas. My first pair were the, uh, they were this color actually. It was the turquoise. It was like almost the opposite of this. It was the turquoise with the in between this area was like a yellow and red color. I'll put another picture up on screen. They were absolutely stunning. Love them and put them on my feet for the first time. And I remember thinking to myself, there is absolutely no way that these are this comfortable because they're totally fly knit. They've got the Brio cables for lockdown and some of that other and, and ACC technology, right? Like we don't even know if that's a real thing. Uh, shout out sr for you But uh, it blew me away and they were one of the most comfortable shoes I had ever put on my feet and I was completely switched. So the sole plate actually is very similar to that from the Tiempo of that generation. And it's the same last, I believe, as the Tiempo. Um, or excuse me, the same last as the Hypervenom 1. And the stud pattern that's very similar to the Tiempo from that era. So a lot of conical studs with a few bladed studs right in the middle for a little bit of that tra traction. And they fit most people. Um, the weird thing about the sizing for these is that I actually, in the Magista line, and in the same way that the CTRs were the predecessors to this one, the CTRs, I had to do the same thing. So these are actually a US nine and a half. I'm usually a US nine, um, but I wear a nine and a half in these ones and they fit perfectly at that. So I think for whatever reason, the last of these was just a little bit, it fit a little small, which means you go up half a size and they're perfect. So the reason I bought these, now let's talk about this. So they were advertised on the website so you guys could go on and see how much these cost, but they were very reasonably priced for what they are. And, and maybe that's a demand thing, maybe that's something else. Um, and Marcus obviously talked about that a little bit in the interview, but the thing that I really want to make sure you guys understand is that I bought these not because of how much they cost or what they look like, but the way they make me feel. Having a boot, and, and I don't mean fit, on feet. I mean, like literally the boot and the nostalgia makes me feel a certain type of way. And I bought them because I want to have a pair of these that I wear every once in a while. And I know I had a friend of mine the other day say about the CTRs and these ones, why would you wear those? You've got to keep them forever. They've got to be hung up. And I'm like, what's the point? First of all, uh, boots like these don't last forever. So they do start to crack. They do start to 
sort of erode after erode is a strong word but erode after a little while and you'll see cracks in the sole plate you'll see cracks in the upper and so they're meant to be worn and the other thing that i was thinking about is if they do make me feel that type of way and it is a mental game why not wear them when i know that i'll play a little bit better in a pair of shoes like this so my thought is here when i start playing soccer and here's the whole point of this video is to say, and lay out a plan of what my boots are gonna look like in the next couple months, which I'm very excited for. So I've got this pair that I own, I've got the pair of CTR360 Elites that I own, and I have a pair of the Predator uh, Accelerator remakes, or Mania remakes, not Mania, the Predator remakes, anyway. So I've got all three of those pairs. I love them dearly, they all fit really, really well. When I get back into actually playing and getting into boots again, and I'll do an on-feet portion, so stay tuned for that in just a minute. I'll try on my the right boot. I'm actually in a cast right now, so I can't uh, try these on for real, for real, on both feet. But what my thought is, is what I'm going to do is as soon as I start playing soccer again and on the field in a couple months, I'm going to purchase a pair or two of probably my favorite silos. So maybe it'll be a Predator. It, it's probably going to be one of the Mizuno Rebula Cup boots that I loved so much in those reviews. Um, it could be something like a Tiempo. It could be one of the other Nike models. We will see depending on what they come out with. So that is the plan. And then every once in a while when I feel like breaking them out, and that's the whole point. It's an experience. It's about having fun. And if you can afford it, it's a great thing. Obviously, I probably spend more money on boots than anything else in my life. And so that is a choice that I like to make because I'm a footballer right now. And I absolutely love the feeling of these. So that is my thoughts. You guys know what the Magistas are. Most of you have probably seen them. They're not for sale currently, obviously, because they came out in 2014. But definitely, definitely go check out Marcus on Instagram. It's at proper underscore retro underscore boots on on instagram obviously you've seen his tag already definitely go check out if he has any more of these and he'll probably stock some at some point uh, plus a bunch of other really amazing boots the other thing that i think is really interesting about marcus's position which i spoke about in the interview is his situation in sort of the middle ground so he's not doing the high end he's doing a lot of high end stuff but he's also doing a lot of the mid-tier stuff which i think is such an amazing thing because at a really attractive price point he's able to provide the boots that a lot of people really loved back in the day, several years ago. And so it's really great for him to be able to provide those for people like me who say, and obviously this, yes, this is the top end model, but to provide those boots to players who grew up playing with the most beautiful shoes and to provide those for us because it's such a cool opportunity for him to connect. And obviously we were able to connect and um, probably future collabs in the, in the future, which is amazing. So without further ado, guys, I'm going to push the table out of the way and we're going to get into an on feet portion of the video to get my reaction. I haven't actually tried these on yet and I am so excited to see and remember how they fit and feel on feet because I remember them being absolutely incredible. So let's hop into that, guys. All right, guys, now to the on feet portion. I got the black little tablecloth down on the ground so you guys get a little more contrast with these pair of boots. Obviously, I'm wearing a cast, so I gotta only hit the right side, which is totally fine. Some of you guys asked me about the grip socks and about what kind of grip socks I wear. I will show you guys in sort of an up close. These are light guard socks. They're really amazing. I love them. I would love to create a pair of grip socks myself someday, but it takes a lot of money, a lot of time, and I am up to other things right now. So I am not really in the market for trying on or making my own pair of grip socks. So for now, light guard will do just fine. And they're really awesome. Um, this is not, this is like a product that I use. I don't, I'm not sponsored by them and I'm not getting paid to say this, but I do use their their stuff. So definitely go check them out. They are on the pricey end, but in my opinion, for sure worth it. And they're not like grossly sticky, like a lot of some of those other ones that just have like rubber kind of elements on the bottom. These ones actually have like little, they're, they're much more comfortable, put it that way. And they are a little bit tough to get on, but that's because they're like a compression sock. So they fit really nicely and they feel really good on feet and kind of help that blood flow, if you will. So let's hop to a different angle and I will show you guys the, uh, the fit and feel. So yeah, so these are amazing. Again, usually what I would do is I would kind of do this and then just to get them on pretty straightforward and boom, right in there. Oh my goodness. 
that is exactly if the smile on my face is uh, enough. I'm gonna get teary-eyed here. These are exactly how I remember them. Just absolutely fantastic, so comfortable. Oh my goodness, like barely any break in time. Look at that, ooh. Yeah, these are incredible. Tie the laces tight for you guys really quick, just to show you what they look like on feet. Yeah, holy moly. Yep, there we go. Amazing lockdown. They're wide enough for my foot, which is awesome. And yeah, they fit perfectly in the toe. My toe's right up against the edge. You know, feet are not too spilling too far over the, the edge of the sole plate, basically, which is awesome. And they fit super snug. So I reckon I'm going to wear these probably more often than I should, but I will definitely be getting these out on the pitch because I just, I love them. They're some of the best boots I've ever worn in my life and I can't stress that enough. So as always guys, be awesome, take care, and I will see you guys in the next video.